Okay, now it's us. Uh, let me check. Yes, it's us with all with, with the all the cameras on the Twitch. We are alive. So welcome again. Yeah, welcome, Radim. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's great to have you uh, at uh, yeah at uh, Buglip Discord server, which is uh, we can say that it's like the uh, yeah yeah Buglip is like the main hub uh, for the um, in the uh, in the games in, in Istanbul and. It's great to uh, have someone uh, for the first time from Amanita Studios uh, to, yeah, to to share their experiences, especially uh, with the last game. So what we are doing is we are uh, broadcasting. Uh, we are having the session here on Discord, but we are also broadcasting it live from our Twitch channel. Uh, and later on, we will also archive it uh, on our YouTube channel, which will which we will share it again with with the people uh, like. Who like missed uh, this uh, evening? So uh, yeah, me nice. and Arturo uh, will will be will be helping you. We'll be moderating the session, and we will uh, get the questions from our audience from both Twitch and Discord. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, and before and I know that you have a uh, presentation, but maybe uh, before starting, uh, you'd like to introduce yourself or like maybe just some uh, some tutorial uh, uh, about your adventure. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, so uh, hello everybody, and thanks for invitation for this. It's a uh, it's kind of new thing for me, so I hope I will not mess so uh, too much. And uh, so I am Radim Jurda. I am from Amanita Design, and I am a lead uh, designer and lead uh, artist for our newest game, Creeks, that we released this uh, this summer. And uh, I prepared some presentation. To show you the making of the game, <laughs> like this, and uh, yeah, and so I will, I will share, I will share my screen, and I sure. think I can just hop into it. Yes. So. Uh, okay, I'll great. Share. Thank you. So. So. If you can see the title screen of Greeks, I can, I can, just talk. Okay. Uh, ah, yeah. no, no. Wait a second. So, um, can you hear me? Can you tell me if you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. So, uh, so uh, I will just get into it. Uh, like in the beginning, I would like to say that uh, Creeks is actually the first video game I was working on, uh, but it's not the first uh, Amanita design game because the studio is here already around 15 years. And the reason for this is because uh, like, I came with this idea, and there was a and like we created a new team uh, for working on this game. Uh, actually, in Amanita Design, uh, there are there are like couple of uh, independent teams, and each of the team is working on their own game. And uh, there are four four teams at the moment, and this is the reason like we are somehow able to come with a new game every year. But the development of uh, each of the game takes like much longer time. Uh, it can be from, uh, like I think, shortest were pilgrims that took two years, and I think the longest would be Greeks that uh, we are kind of record months in this, and it took almost eight years to finish it from the first idea completely. And uh, in my talk, I will somehow. Ah. And in my talk, somebody's calling. And in my talk, I will, uh, I will cover these eight years from the beginning, from the first uh, sketches up to the final final uh, game we made. And in the beginning, I will just play the trailer to a little bit uh, like show you what where it all headed in the end. And then I will go back in time and show you the b basic sketches and first prototypes and like show you how the idea was created and so on. So this is the trailer.
some a little bit extra. All right. Uh, so this is the trailer, and now we are going back, uh, like to the first sketches and like generally finding the theme and idea for the game and how it all started. So it actually all started like around these eight years ago when I was studying uh, my university in Prague. It was art school and I was studying uh, animation and TV graphics. And when I was like trying to find a theme for my diploma thesis, uh, I was for diploma work. I wanted to, uh, I just decided to make a game and uh, because also it's interesting that at the same school also like the founder of the uh, Amanita Design at Udvorsky was studying there and Samoros, which is the first game of Amanita Design, uh, was his diploma work and then Bota Nikula was uh, Jaromir Plachy's diploma work. So when it, uh, when I, when it, uh, when the time came to me, I also decided to make a game and I was like thinking what to do. And so I was looking for a theme. And it's a little bit difficult for me to put it in words. Uh, somehow in the time I was uh, like thinking about uh, like when people, to, when people communicate, something like this, that sometimes you like misinterpreted stuff and thinking your own things from it. Uh, like somehow the idea that if you know something just partly or see something partly, like then you start to create your own full picture of the of the reality and like i was thinking how I, I like this theme and i was thinking how to put it into some visual form and i was like thinking different stuff to do like if somebody is in the, like something is in a fog but we see just like a little bit and go closer and see it more like better clearer or like we see just some like small part of the picture and we, we think it's something different and if we see the full picture and something like this. And in the end, I came out with the idea that uh, like with this kind of like children's imagination, like when you are in a dark room and uh, then you see some strange silhouette in a corner, you think it's some strange creature, but if you put a light on it, you see it's just uh, like a stand coat, with, stand coat with some clothes on it and it's just a harmless piece of furniture in the end. So. This was the idea that uh, I like it also visually and also I, I thought that uh, it can have potential for some interesting game mechanics. So I, I, I somehow stick with this idea. Yeah, and this is like one of the first sketches of uh, our enemy, this, this dog that is like uh, that is a creature in the dark uh, that can chase you and kill you and it's a harmless piece of furniture in the light. Here I have just another sketch when I was, uh, this is like I made their decision that uh, the story I wanted to be I wanted to it to be like a little bit mm. like you can interpret it in more ways you can uh, you can think it, that the hero really made some special trip into this strange world but also you can also kind of interpret it like it's somehow his subconscious or something like this like to be on the edge if it's in his head or if he really finds this place. And I made also some first sketches for the uh, puzzle designs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so they look like this. Okay, and also, also during my school project, I was also uh, sketching and drawing the env environment of the game and like trying to find out how it will all look. Uh, this is one of the first sketches of the, the mansion that the, it takes place in, in it. And I like that uh, also it's very well drawing uh, it's kind of similar to the final, 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 mm, final environment we have in the game now. Uh, so I will show you a few of these uh, early sketches that I was just drawing kind of freely to find the mood and atmosphere of the game and setting. So here we see the hero sleeping peacefully in the light and some strange monstrous lurking in the dark next to him. Here we see uh, like the hero is meeting some some NPC character and a little bit of the environment. I almost made this sketch, and in this uh, in this uh, moment, I was thinking if uh, I I knew that there will be this shape shifting furniture monsters in the game, and so the game will take place in some interiors, and but I was still thinking if it will be like a strange abandoned house or it will be like a whole 
underground city, something like this. So uh, I was uh, here, I was making sketches that was going for this uh, underground city, the city idea. So we see the whole like uh, shops here and some park, underground park, and this uh, public swimming pool. There's also this like public abandoned places. It has a nice atmosphere for me. Uh, and here we see, uh, yeah, and here there is idea it will take place in some like a uh, abandoned castle, like a, like more like a house. Uh, in this sketch, I was uh, thinking to do it uh, to get some inspiration from uh, modernism and cubism architecture from the beginning of the 20th century, because I think it's not so much uh, seen in the games and it's interesting. It has interesting shapes and designs and somehow fits also this uh, kind of cubistic creatures. And kind of everything, in the end, I, I chose to use the, the house idea uh, to be a little bit simpler and also kind of more intimate. And uh, But we are like, mixing there these strange, strange um, environments, like we are having also something like this and also something, something like this in the game. Here I have two sketches that uh, were kind of like uh, nicely capturing the mood of the game that I was trying to achieve. And we have the like, most important things in the sketches already. The hero, the lights, paintings, some, some strange creature here, weird guy. Here is another one. Uh, also here is, we already have the cave in the background that also make it into the final game. Uh, okay, and yeah, and at the same time I was doing these tests for animation because it was like animation school, so I needed to make it also somehow move up, like somehow in a moving presentation. And uh, so this was the first uh, test that I still kind of like. It was in the beginning I was thinking to make it like a full, full sprite animation, not to make it cut out. Uh, and that was really like yeah, this one. And but I was really like going white, <laughs> like from the white perspective to it. So here I was trying to do also like a character from the wood completely. I like how the light was uh, shining on him from the different angles. Uh, but in the end, we just let it like the character is lighted or, or dark. We didn't put it in the game. It was kind of too difficult. Ah, so that makes and at the same time, during my school project, I, I designed a couple of puzzles like this. Like when I look at them from, from back, they are not working so much. But uh, I think they were already potential and I saw that this idea can, can bring some nice game situations and moments so we can use them in the game. Here is one of the first sketches that kind of uh, made it into the opening scene of the game. And it's inspired uh, of, with me living in my flat during my studies at the university. So it's kind of like, it's kind of the picture from our apartment that uh, I lived in Prague and was making the game. Yeah, uh, here also uh, during the school project, uh, me and my friend uh, Honza Klub, that he was then working with me on the game, we developed a couple of prototypes together that we were testing the ideas. So I will just show you. They are quite, quite funny. So this is the first version of Kriegs. <laughs> we are thinking about using the flashlight. The hero will have a flashlight. And here we have like a, one object that is turning into the balloon in the dark and uh, in the light and some uh, is it called? bowling ball in the dark. But uh, we find out that if he will have the flashlight all the time, it will be too, power too powerful. Like the creatures, they will be turned into light very easily and it will be kind of mess. So like he has the flashlight in the game, but he just lost it in the second scene and then he don't have it all the time. He finds something else then in the end of the game, but, but you will have to find out what it is. Uh, Okay, and then we have, then we made another prototype that, that looked like this. Uh, 
Okay, it was made in flesh. So this was, this, this looks a little bit better. Uh, you also have their animation for the desk that looks like, like, look like this. And this, it's actually already working puzzle, this one, but it's very difficult to finish it because the controls are not very, not very friendly. Uh, okay. Yeah, but this idea is really great. I mean, this animation idea is really great. Yeah, yeah. This it's also like coming, like one of the like one of my mm, inspirations was another world, for example. Mm. And I, I always loved that the devs are special animations there. Yeah, yeah, so. I, yeah, yeah. I was just going to ask that. So you will long. Uh, yeah, you will live longer than me. I was just going to ask that, are you inspired by Underworlds? Uh, that, uh, that, that yeah. scene, it's very obvious, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to say that, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it's actually for many people, like, it was inspiration and um, it's a great yeah, game. Like, quite, quite short in the end, if you know what to play it, but the atmosphere and the feeling that you are lost in this strange world is, is great. So it was inspiration, yeah. <laughs> Another, yeah, another one I think I would say it, it's, uh, it would be Braid, that I like also very much. I'm, I, I'm not completely, I think it, I was already like, um, the first ideas of the game, I already had them when, the, when this game came out, but I'm not sure, maybe it was a little bit earlier. But in, in Braid, I really liked that uh, somehow the whole game was personal for the, for the creator, for Jonathan Blow, and this was really interesting for me so i also wanted to make it like a little bit like an introspective journey um, but at the same time to be like a like a fantasy adventure but like you mean the game of uh, jonathan below you mean the 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 braids yes yes ah, okay yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah uh all right so i'm jump i will hop back to the presentation So will be ah okay and this is the this is the uh, video uh, that uh, like a trailer for the for the game that uh, it wasn't existing but uh, this was like my diploma video that I was yeah that I was presenting there in the end and the, there is a trailer and then like a, there are two two walkthroughs that I faked to be like a gameplay but it was just like animation so I will show you one of them the, the trailer and one of the walkthroughs. I will really stop it in the in, in, in the middle. Hmm. Well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, then, uh, uh, just a yeah, just a mini question for you. Well, yeah, yeah. By the way, I'm uh, still playing the game. Um, like maybe I'm not. It's yeah. It's a it's a difficult game, by the way. <laughs> it 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 really takes time, and it's it's a it's a long game, and it's great. Yeah, I I was just uh, wondering that. The, the start scene that, uh, like, you are kind of like a writer, and I and I kind of imagined that he is like a, a version of Kafka, like he is like lonely writing in his room, and something happens, and he dives into a fantasy. So, yeah, I mean, since you are from like Prague, you are from from Czechia, uh, mm -hmm. are are you inspired by him by his let's say uh, his uh, his magic? I don't know uh, his way of writing. Yeah, I, I like I know it and uh, I learned about him a lot. But I have to say I, I didn't write completely like his his books. But I believe it's kind of close that it's also about this uh, transformations. So also the game is about oh. transformation. So yeah, I should write it. Yeah, cool. Uh, oh, I should, I should I... It. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, it was, I, 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 was, I was inspired with it, uh, by, by him, but uh, I believe that there are some like uh, similarities. In it. 
Cool. I think it, it's kind of like maybe in your DNA since since you are from the same yeah, like, I, the, I, I, same I, hometown. <laughs> yes, I, I believe I believe this. Like like I think somehow the the, the Prague mood also is there and. It's a little bit inspired by my uh, time in the Prague, and I, I didn't, I didn't like it there so much, to be honest. <laughs> like it didn't, uh, somehow it didn't grow to me like, like the city, too much. But uh, yeah, <laughs> cool. it was, uh, it Thank was you. like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's continue. This one is hard. Let's let's. <laughs> it's not an easy puzzle. Like yeah, I, yeah. I, I grew up with all the broken swords and all the Lucasarts adventures, but this one was really good. <laughs> all right. So uh, okay, like this. Yeah, this one actually we had in a playable demo version, and it was quite okay. But the final jumping was completely crazy for the people to to make it. So. <laughs> Almost nobody, nobody finished it. Anyway, uh, like after I finished the diploma with uh, kind of what you saw now, uh, I, I already during the, the during the work on it, I wanted actually Jakub Dvorsky, the founder of Amrita Design, to be the I don't know how to tell it, like the person that the critic of my work, but uh, he refused because he had too much work. But uh, he told me that we can meet sometimes in a pub, just like. Uh, to have a chat about it and he can give me feedback on it. So like we meet, met for a few times and in the end he liked the idea very much and uh, like he decided to uh, to help me and Honza with the project and actually like took us under under his studio wings and uh, help us to uh, help us to like find some more people to the team so we can we can like work on the game like full time. So uh, yeah. Uh, in the beginning, we were like five people working on the game. It was me. I was doing the kind of like leading everything. Uh, then Honza that was helping me uh, with the graphics and uh, and he was with, with what. Then we have one more uh, game designer, one programmer, uh, Jan Irsa, and one animator, Pavel Pachta. Yeah. Uh, and in a, okay. And um, when we start working in Amanita, uh, in the beginning we were like uh, creating. Uh, like, because it was just like ideas for the world and for the story and, and everything, it was more like a concept. So we were trying to create like a final storyboard to find final story, final characters. And uh, at the same time, we were programming the first prototypes and testing if the puzzles are working uh, already in the game. Uh, so it actually took maybe like two years to, to prepare everything, uh, also technically and also like to find everything. Uh, and I will show you some something from this uh, period, and uh, I will start with the storyboard that we created. Um, it will be okay, like because we chose the game will be completely without uh, without text to be like wordless storytelling. So 
uh, we, we, we decided for this, I think for two reasons. One, because I like it. I like it in the previous Amanita games that, and also everybody in the world uh, see the same thing, hear the same thing and can understand the story. And also I think it's kind of easier for us as a visual artist mostly to express ourselves through animation and pictures than, than through words. We are not so skilled for with words, I think. Anyway, uh, to set the story, we created this uh, long detailed storyboard and it has, uh, it has like 900 or around 900 pages. And uh, we prepare it very, very, in a very detailed way so we can test it if everybody understands it, like even if they saw the storyboard without any words, if they can understand the story. So it was like our, our test, if it makes sense, everything. And it was a good thing in the development because uh, we really, we really like stick, stick to it. Like if you are working on some game for such a long time, that there are like new ideas coming and maybe you are able to go to the different path, but this long storyboard really help us to stay on the track. So there are kind of like all the situations there in the game. And it's nice that we really use them, like a little bit, little bit alter them, but they are there in the game. So it's a storyboard. Okay. And also in the, in the storyboard, we, we, uh, as we had the story, uh, we find out that we will have there like a couple of uh, non-playable characters and each character will have a, like a part of this house dedicated to him. Uh, also like in the, so there will, it will be like divided into worlds and each world will introduce new character and also a new creature that we will be playing with. And so I was doing these sketches to find out how the worlds will look. So these are like one and second of my first sketches I was doing. Uh, I was like trying to find some some stuff that I will actually use them more often to kind of get the um, visual style of the of the of the world. And I made uh, in the end I made these digital paint digital drawings that uh, we actually used some puzzles that we kind of have it already kind of have them prepared but just on the paper and try to turn them into into like how it will all blend together and also like find uh, some objects that I will rep like use them more times to create the feeling of, of the distinct feeling of each of the worlds. So this is the attic. Here are the libraries. This is the second world that uh, it's inspired with the Gothic architecture. And also like there are some themes about space and uh, yeah, a lot of books and some flowers and, and stuff like this. This is another world that is uh, more inspired with the uh, like uh, Baroque and Rococo architecture. And this is dedicated to the hunter character. So there are a lot of like strange trophies on the walls and collections. And the towers, they are more like a, it's like a spiritual world. And these are more like a physical world that uh, like with the riches and we have a gym there in the game. And yeah, so it's like this. Uh, another world we have there, it's uh, the world that uh, belongs to the last ca character. I will not completely tell what is his role in the story. And uh, here we got inspiration with the Cubist architecture and modernism. Uh, for example, here is the uh, here is a wardrobe from Yusuf Gochar, Cubist Czech architect. It's uh, like it's really inspiration from his furniture. Um, and another world is the basement, and yeah, you see that this is not, it's kind of a mix of the architectures, and, but kind of give us the feeling how we will, we will do it. Okay, uh, and so this is the worlds, and we were also like preparing the characters and how they will look. Uh, in the beginning, like, I wanted them to not to be humans, really, really for Hero to be like the only human in the game, also to have this feeling that he's lost and uh, maybe he's imagining everything. So to be just their only, only human. So we are thinking how these creatures will look. So this is a bit like early sketches. It could be anything. It can be some horse humans. This is, I don't know what it is actually, some red guy. 
I was also trying to mix different animals into one character, which I think is still quite cool. Uh, yeah, and then then uh, I I kind of have there often these bird characters. I kind of like them, but somehow for me it didn't make sense. Like it's it's underground, it's an underground mansion. Like why? What are the birds doing there? So I was like thinking maybe to make badgers there. Uh, but in the end, my colleagues uh, kind of uh, tell me that uh, it's actually interesting to have their the bird characters. Like uh, it's making their more interesting, like and deeper maybe their history and what are doing there. And it's nice contrast to be to have birds underground. So we were deciding to go with the bird guys then, with these avian people. And when we decided this, I was then sketching a lot of versions how they can look actually in the game. And uh, for example, here I have a hunter, some version of the hunter that in the game that was in the game in the end. I like this one that he has this Christmas Christmas uh, lights lasso with him. Yeah, like this. I made this uh, like the pictures that uh, I capture. This is for, the, for this is for one of the characters, and I capture like more more versions of him. I don't have here the final version, but this is like a development of his character. This is the development of the hunter character. Ah, and here we see the development of the hero uh, from the first prototype to the final version. And so you see the like the clothes he was having them from the from the start to the to the end the same, but. Uh, like his head became bigger and his eye for sure became bigger. Here we start with one pixel, then go for two pixels, three pixels. We start to open it, and in the end we have this like very surprised guy, uh, which uh, like for for a long time we had this one, and I, I like him actually. But uh, but uh, I think this one in the end fits better into the environment, and also because we are doing it uh, wordless, the storytelling. It was nice to have their bigger face and bigger hands to be more expressive, and because we are telling the story just in animation and gestures, so it was in the end better. Here, here I have a page when I was trying to find his face, and I find out that if I am just drawing from my head, it's a little bit boring. Maybe what I what I create like like kind of normal. So so then I was just like uh, stalking my on Facebook and looking for their photos and trying to draw them. So here I have our animator Pavel Pachta, here is my colleague Honza, and here is Lukáš that actually actually in the end made it to the final game. So the, the character, his face is inspired with my colleague Lukáš Kunce, uh, who's doing PR and also like production. He was doing this in the final phase of the development. Okay, I was also uh, at the same time sketching the different different monsters, how they will look in the dark, how they will look in the light, and uh, trying to find like some functions how they will how they will behave. And at the same time, I was just like freely drawing them, like just like to find them with my mind and also a little bit like with some cautions, uh, subconscious to find their shapes and stuff like this. Uh, as I mentioned many times already, uh, like we were also working with Honza Chlup, and in the beginning he kind of didn't have very much what to do, and uh, also we decided that we will add another uh, layer to the game, that we will uh, like add special collectible. Like in our game, there, there are like 30 uh, painted pictures you can find on the walls, and they are telling you a little bit about the. Uh, mythology of the world, about the characters in the world, and some of them are also like playable. So uh, we decided that he will do these paintings to, 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 yeah, like for these reasons. And in the beginning, as I was like trying to find out uh, how the characters will look like, he was also trying to find the style of the paintings. So he started quite, uh, quite dark and uh, really surrealistic and trying different techniques also. <clears throat> Here are two of them that we really use in the game in the end. So it wasn't bird guys in the beginning. Uh, yeah, here is another. And kind of it uh, 
in the end, like he got inspiration from the paintings of 19, 19th, 18th century, kind of his classical portraits. Uh, but uh, he was always putting the creatures into some strange position, like this guy standing in the water, like for apparently no reason. A little bit to tell also about the about the characters of the game, that they are not bad guys. <laughs> that maybe it looks like it in the beginning. Yeah, and this is uh, one of his first painting that already has kind of bird guy in it, and we were laughing at him that uh, he cannot uh, he cannot paint horses very much. It's very static this one. So then he uh, trained trained very well, and uh, we have some horses in the final game that they are much better than this one. Okay, and, and now so when everything was set, and also <laughs> we spent many time on it. We moved to the production phase that we already were working on the final assets we used in the game. And uh, I will now show you how the paintings are made, like the final assets of it, then the background, backgrounds, and uh, animations. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is the, how the painting is looking, uh, like the final version of the painting that you can find in the game. And uh, in the end, we have there two versions of the paintings of these collectibles. We have there uh, these paintings that you can pull the string and you hear some music and there is some little animation to make it to make the, the view alive. And, and then there is another version of the painting which are like, a, like a wooden boxes and they contain some mini game in it. So they are like a 18th and 19th century arcade cabinets. So we have the like endless runner, some shooters, and rhythmical game and stuff like this, a little bit making fun of it. And from us also. <laughs> ah, okay, so this is how the, the paintings were created. This Honza that is painting some of the paintings in his studio. Uh, okay, and in the beginning he just like came up with some sketches and to find a theme for the painting. Then he made some digital digital sketches in the computer. Uh, that we made a lot of versions to find the final composition and everything we wanted to want to be there. And then he painted it with the uh, all oil paintings. Uh, yeah. Uh, and once it was painted, uh, he photographed it, and it looked kind of like this: the final photo, uh, the final photograph of the painting. And then he sp spent uh, another hours in the in the computer to make post production and adjust it to add there some colors, some details, and stuff like this. And in the end, it looks like this after the computer post production. And this is the version you can find in the game. Uh, as I tell, uh, like in the beginning, he made the painting just static like this. But when we add the string to play some music. So when people do it, like they were expecting something will happen, it, like the music was not enough. So Honza uh, kind of decided to add there these small details that he, that he painted. And so each, each of the painting has some small animation, some small joke or something. So it make it more alive. <laughs> Actually, we were already in this space, we were kind of running out of the time. Uh, and I tell him not to do it because like, we have still a lot of do things we have to do, and but he kind of like uh, listen, didn't listen to me and like secretly, secretly, secretly paint all this stuff and make the animations for them, and I think it's great in the end. It really like brings it to life and it helps it a lot. Uh, okay, and here we see the process of creating one of the mini games, like a mini game paintings. So this is the first sketch. This is Honza's uh, game design for it. <laughs> game design sketch. Then he made a, like a playable prototype in, with this simple graphics. And when we saw it works, he started to paint these uh, characters like for the final version. So here are some pictures of the, of the different parts of, the, of, the, of, the, of this mini game. And this is how it looks in the game. And here I will show you uh, like a short video uh, how how it is put together
and here here is just like Honza's hand painting to see how it's how it's done. And this is actually not for something completely in the game, but uh, we we are releasing soundtrack for the game. Like it, it's already released the digital version of it, but. Uh, like in in a, in a week or something like this, we are releasing the um, LP for it, and also they made a special applications application to to play the soundtrack like uh, in kind of randomized way that you can hear it, you can hear it differently every time. Uh, you can check for this on our web page if you would like. Okay, and, and now uh, now to show you how the uh, scenes and the puzzles were created. Uh, so in the beginning. Beginning when we had the idea for the puzzle, uh, we created also these storyboards. Very simple to to see if it's working already in a simple in a simple way like this. Uh, we we already find that many ideas if we put them in a storyboard it didn't work. Or, yeah, so this helped us a lot. And when it worked, we uh, we made like a rough prototype for for them. In the, in the in the Unity Unity engine that we were using for the game, and when we have this prototype, uh, we also start to sketch the the, the uh, like a background like the background how it will look, and I, I, I I'm telling uh, I'm saying it's it was kind of like a visual puzzle because we always have already the proportions of the level how they, how it will be, and then we were trying to find something that that will be maybe be interesting to look at also maybe not to be not to be uh, too difficult so people will be not uh, uh, they can still concentrate on on solving the puzzles not to be so overwhelmed with the background but sometimes sometimes it happens in case i think so we were trying to find some uh, some shape of the, of the room and when we find it i i printed this digital sketch and uh, draw it on paper like this. Then we again, then we again scan it and put it to the computer. And okay, okay. In the beginning, in the beginning, I was there are these places that they are in light. If you turn on the light, uh, I, I made them like a special extra drawing. <laughs> and uh, in the end, it was really crazy, crazy a lot of work. So. Later, it's just like the same picture that is a little bit different. It was productive, but but okay. The, the first first world of the game has this extra pictures also for the uh, places that are that are under the light. And this is how the game looks. Uh, this is how the level looks in the game, like a final version. After we add colors in the computer and make some post production, some shadows and stuff like this. Okay, here is another one. That uh, this is the first first prototype rough sketch of the level. Then this is the drawing, I scanned, and uh, this is the final appearance of the level in the game. Yeah. Ah, okay, I have here one more sketches, drawing, drawings, and the uh, final final screenshot. Here I have some just a few pictures uh, from this process of of drawing. On the paper, one is the second one. You can see it's quite large. The paper for some levels. Some yeah, here are some places in the light. Here also. So I I, I made actually a lot of uh, drawings like this, and uh, and it was it was nice, and uh, I think it looks cool, but it was really. Long process to to create uh, to create levels in this way. I think the most uh, annoying and difficult part was when we when we draw it. I have to scan each picture again to the computer, and because they are quite big, it, it took like ten scans maybe to to scan on on my A4 scanner, and then I have to blend it together in the computer, which was okay. It was done automatically, but the proportions of the level were kind of messed up, so I need to. Uh, I need to kind of like pin the picture again and like move the picture for the for the original proportions because they are important in the in the game. So it was quite time consuming, and uh, because the characters of the game they were drawn in the computer with use of some uh, 
so aquarial textures we we just like thought uh, thought to ourselves that maybe we can also try to make a background completely oh completely oh, in, in the in the computer to draw it to draw it in the computer so we uh, we spent some time to make some brushes that, that they were they were kind of like imitations of the pens we were using for the normal normal drawing and we scan some uh, textures of the aquarelle and so this is actually i think the first level or one of the first level that is done uh, mostly or the, or the basic drawing is done in a computer and i, I think it it's uh, it's kind of similar uh, as the ones that uh, that we, we were doing completely uh, on the paper uh, and I mean, it was nice that I made a line, and it was it, I, I knew it, the line would be in the game because uh, in the previous process I was doing one line like three or five times, three or five times, to make it appear in the final game. Another thing that uh, it brought us was that uh, if we were working on computer, it was everything was faster, and uh, also if we need to change something, it was it was much easier because in the in the drawing version, if we need to make some. Uh, some hole in the in the ground or something like this. We have to draw it again, scan it again, and it was really very difficult. So this was a little bit easier to make changes, and also uh, in this level I used like uh, many layers for the background. Like there is this basic background, and there are like uh, I think three parallax layers. And if the character is moving, you see how it's moving the layers. And this is something that it would be impossible to do it uh, in the in the paper version because it would be really too much work to do <laughs> with the process of scanning. Uh, so then we continue with this kind of work because we like it and we think it's it's good. <laughs> so we continue it this way. And here I will show you just a few few steps uh, how it looks to creating some level. So this is the first uh, first like uh, ink drawing. Here you see the the aquarelle patterns we created for the game and some brushes. Uh, here it's already you see some a lot of layers we have to to make some places darker, lighter, and so on to add colors. Each level also has a lot of details that we draw separately and export them. Okay, so this is with the with the this is the level also with these details. Here we have also lights, and this is the uh, like a, we call it front parallax. This is the first layer that is also a little bit moving on the picture, so it's making it a little bit like a three D feel to it. If you if you if you go if you walk around, and this is how the final level looked like in the in the in the Photoshop. And uh, once we have this level, we also have these huge documents that uh, they were because each level is actually connected with another level. So it's like a one. Actually, the, if I tell it in a simple way, like the whole game is uh, five these these huge pictures. That they are connected together. Like each world is actually like one big picture connected with the smaller ones. So it has really like a million pixels, very million pixels. Yeah, so it's like this. And then we were putting it to the Unity uh, and making animation for the for these uh, small details. And this is how it how it looks in the final game. Okay, here I have like one more example, and I would just like to tell uh, like actually I think two notes for the game design. Uh, yeah, well, one is that in the beginning I was trying I was trying it uh, to be just uh, okay. First, I would have to tell that it's a little bit the, the gameplay is different than the other Amrita, Amrita design games because so far all of the Amrita design games were point and click adventures, and this one is actually like a um, puzzle game, platform puzzle game, and uh, so I decided to do it uh, basically because. Because I'm not very big player of the point and click adventure games, so these are these puzzle games are like closer to me, also like a player. But I think also like uh, it's easier for me to think these puzzles up, so it's also closer to me like a designer. Uh, and uh, okay, and so in, in the puzzle design, 
I was uh, in the beginning. I was just trying to make a good puzzles, like to to be to have there some objects that they are maybe used more in the game, or you have, there is some lever that it's obviously doing one thing. But if you if you think a little bit hard, if you find out that you can use it also for another thing in the in the in the in the, in the puzzle solving. So uh, I was trying to do this, but then I also start to add little. I wanted to each puzzle to have some some joke in it or some little story. So this one, for example, is introducing these two creatures. One is male and one is female, and as you are playing, they are they are helping each other to reach the this floor, and they will give kiss to each other in this uh, in this place at the end of the level. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's actually like an abstract game, but I, w I wanted to give give there some of these little jokes, to be more interesting. It was for me even more important than to make it very difficult to make it somehow interesting the puzzles. Yeah, and also this is the this is the version that uh, in the beginning I was doing the backgrounds, but then Honza joined me, and some of the backgrounds we we did them together. Some of them are did completely by me. Some of them are did completely by Honza, and this one, for example, is completely done by Honza, and he he get this design from me of the puzzle, and then he were trying to find out uh, what uh, like what he will draw there to to have the background. So this I don't know completely what it is. Some uh, some feasts, I guess. Uh, here, bedroom, bathroom, and and then he had this idea that I, that, I, that we think it's nice that uh, there is actually like a jail in the in the in the basement, and so the the characters are trying to uh, like a, it's like a prison break. They are helping each other to escape the prison, and then they give a kiss to each other in the end. And this is how it looks in the game. All right, and we were also doing uh, animations for the game, and uh, we we decided to, in the beginning we, we wanted to do like a full sprite animations, like you saw in the first uh, first tests. But uh, first, it will be it, it would be really a lot of work to do it, and secondly, we had a lot of cut, we had a lot of cut scenes in the game, so if everything would be like a frame by frame. Animations, it will be too much like a drive space consuming. It will, the game would have 50 gigabytes or something like this. So if we, if we use this cut-up animation, each animation is actually like a text document. So it's much uh, more economical in this matter. And here I will show you, uh, our animator Pavel Pachta made this video to, uh, to present you how, uh, how one of the characters the hunter was created from first designs to the to the final appearance in the game. I draw. I also do the cutouts from all the angles. Like we, we have there just a few characters. We have there like five uh, these NPC characters, but uh, they are appearing there a lot, and uh, so I wanted to do their reach so they can do really anything. And each of the characters is like. Uh, Two two hundred cutouts for 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 him. And uh, Pavel did the animation completely in Unity, which was a little bit crazy because we have quite a long cut scenes there, and it uh, like when he copies some frames, like he had to wait for a long time when it copy, and it's not the best uh, environment for animators. The good thing was that, uh, like, we didn't have to didn't have to worry about porting porting the animations from different program to Unity because we are already doing it in Unity. So this was a good thing about it. And also the casting are starting completely. Like uh, you are playing and then the casting starts. So they, like it's really uh, yeah go from one to another. So maybe if they were reporting, they, they would, it would be visible.
drawn really like frame by frame, so it's kind of a combination of frame by frame drawing and cutout drawing. This is how it in the end looked in the game. More or less, we have the old hero here still. And we are slowly getting to the end of, of, the, of the talk. So here I would like to mention the soundtrack of the game, that uh, it was made by uh, Joe Itchison, aka Hidden Orchestra. And uh, it's an interesting project because uh, like, he plays a lot of instruments and has a lot of friends that play different instruments. And he's doing the recording of himself and his friends separately. And then he's putting it together, uh, like to make really like orchestric, rich compositions. So it's like a orchestra of people that they never met each other. So this, that's why it's called an orchestra. And he made a soundtrack for the game. And I would like to tell three things about it. Uh, first thing is that uh, it's great, <laughs> and I think he captured the mood very well. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, and there are like then there are like two features. That are interesting. One is that uh, the soundtrack is kind of uh, randomized. So every time you play the game, you you hear you hear the music a little bit differently. So sometimes it can happen that you die die a lot in the game. So each time you you are you are re respond, the music is uh, played some, slightly different. Uh, it's nicely it's nicely uh, like hearable. For example, in the main menu. When the beginning of the the opening of the mind and music is the same always, but then it's develop, developing in completely random different ways, and you can listen to it for hours and it will be uh, all the time different. And the third uh, interesting thing or feature is that, uh, like we we kind of make the the uh, soundtrack uh, that uh, is interactive with what's happening on the screen and how you are solving the puzzle. So each puzzle has a different uh, like set of steps, and as you are complete, as you are going uh, to the to the um, to win the puzzle, you are achieving these steps, and the music is changing in, in these steps. So it's starting usually quite calmly, like not to not to be uh, disturbing while you are thinking about solving the puzzle. But uh, as you are going closer to the solution, you are the music is changing and then developing into the full full nice track. And it a little bit serves as a hint uh, that you are on the right track, but I think it's mostly like a it's mostly feels like a reward. And when you solve the puzzle, there is some nice jingle and some musical musical reward for you also. <clears throat> okay, uh, then I would like to tell that uh, like I think we are planning to release the game on on PC and also thinking about Xbox and PlayStation Switch these consoles. But uh, I think like one year approximately before we were planning to release the game, uh, like uh, we got or the Apple Arcade got interested in the game, and in the end we like make a deal with them and they supported the development. But uh, we needed to prepare the game also for mobile devices and tablets and uh, like all, all sort of stuff. And uh, so a little bit, I think, delayed also the, the release of the game. And it was actually, I think it was, uh, it was quite difficult for two reasons. One was that uh, we had a lot of graphics uh, in the game, really like many, many assets. And uh, to, be, to be able to play it, on, it had like 16 gigabytes, like the whole game. And to be able to play it on uh, or publish it on arcade, you need you needed to have under four gigabytes. So we really have to optimize it a lot and like cut cut each piece of graphic and somehow put it on a sprite sheets in a in a very economical way. So we 
like we get to this limit under the four gigabytes. So this was one thing, and the second was uh, second was that uh, yeah uh, we, we bring it uh, for the camera uh, ratios sixteen to nine and nineteen to nine, and uh, when we enter the world of mobile phones, we have to prepare it also for wide screen and uh, four mm, four to three ratios, uh, and so it meant completely new set of cameras for each level, each scene, and it was also a lot of work to prepare this. Uh, yeah, so this, this is this one. And, okay, and lastly, I would like to tell that as we were like uh, going to the finish to, to, to release it, uh, it was also, I think, the last, the last year, we start to, we start to work with the, with the Czech company uh, Grid Digital, that they are specializing in porting games on the different different platforms, and they help us to to make the ports for the for the platforms. We were using the Unity that helped us a lot, but still, it was a lot of work to prepare it for for everything. And actually, we managed to publish it on all these platforms at the same time, uh, except of Ar Arcade, that was like 14 days ago. And uh, I think it's quite an achievement. It's really. It's not easy to, to publish it all, all this stuff without some big troubles and, and bugs and something like this. So, uh, yo, yeah. So you can you can find it on all of these things, and yeah. And I guess that's actually the end what I prepared for the end of the presentation. So that was it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It was really great to know all those details. I mean, piece by piece, they were all golden. Thank you. So I guess... Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I guess people, I mean, we have some questions to ask. Um, so who's beginning? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, 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 maybe I truly can just... Uh, uh, I don't know if it's on... Uh, if his screen is online at Twitch. Maybe we can just. Uh, so you can, you can see me, or so yeah, or my yeah, screen yeah. still. Yeah. Uh, is yes. it, okay. Is the yeah, yeah. yeah, you can just uh, turn it off your screen and uh, but but not your camera. Um, At the moment, so it, uh, we are not in a presentation bit. mode. We, we see him. Yes. But but. Okay. Your, is it okay, or should I do something? Yeah. You, yeah, you can just like like right click on your uh, presentation mm -hmm. and stop. just yeah just stop the presentation from the uh, from the share your screen button below. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, stop. Stop streaming. Ah. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Now it's okay. Started. Cool. Okay. Great. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's like a, I mean, it's a great adventure. Like you, you, you completed the game like bit by bit. It's like a, a lot of effort, and you said it took like eight years to complete, like from the idea, but uh, yeah. but but the actual production, I guess, took like three or four years, or what can you say? Uh, actually, it? yeah. It was like seven, seven years under Amanita, seven and a half maybe. Mm. And uh, so like it took us a long time and it was like, it was like two, two years of this pre-production when we were preparing everything. And then maybe it was like four years or something that we were really doing the production phase and uh, making final assets and everything, mm. maybe, maybe four to five, something like this. Wow. And, and, and how many people you worked yeah. on, on the, on this project? Because I know that uh, yeah. yeah 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 I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I mean the design is is kind of like a, a, let's say an art collective so so you have like like different teams working on different projects yeah so on this project mm -hmm. like, like like how many people you were working uh, like most of the time it was five of us working on a project mm -hmm. uh, it was like two two graphic designers one programmer. Uh, one animator and one uh, one extra designer for the game, and uh, like as we were going further, 
also like a musician and the sound designer joined the team. So they were like seven of us working on it. Wow. Uh, and uh, but uh, like this, the last year, like uh, like also the other and before the before the release, also other people from the team helped, and everybody was doing what what, what can. And uh, also the uh, like we we start this this cooperation with Grip Digital that help us with the porting. So then it was like last last I don't know last six months it was quite a lot of people working on it to to finish everything and prepare everything. But like most of the years it was like five people and then seven people. Okay, okay great. Um... Okay, I guess we I guess we, we will have many questions and we could we could check the live chat part and also on the uh, we could check the Twitch uh, channel. So and uh, and and we can also uh, like also turn off your turn on your mics, right? We, can we, Arturo? Uh, if they have a if they want to speak up? Yes, I guess we can. Let me. Okay, maybe Volkan could help me about us. No, 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 I can do that. Ah, no, okay. Don't. I learned that part. <laughs> yeah, cool. Or right, anyway, uh, 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 yeah, please like shoot free, like, uh, that, like, like since we have your guest here, uh, so it's uh, it's better to like ask questions and and learn about his process. Uh, his tips and tricks, probably. <laughs> yeah, now everyone is able to speak up as long as they want to. Uh, unmute yourselves and then please go ahead yes. and ask. Yeah, you, you can ask your questions at the live Q&A. Uh, uh, so the, in the meantime, I can ask a question. It's a little bit, I mean... You know, like many people know you with the game called Mechanarium, I guess. Uh, so mm -hmm. it, it was a huge success. Uh, I reviewed the game. I'm uh, at the same time a reviewer in a one gaming magazine in Turkey. So I reviewed the game and it was an amazing moment to see that uh, style, let's say. I mean, I was kind of yeah. used to know that gameplay. Because I'm a bit old, not that much, but still, I grew up with the LucasArts games and with all those adventures and some ideas. But uh, what do you think about the Mechanarium and the your following games? What has been changed? Because you already have your style, definitely. But what were the improvements for your game studio from Mechanarium till today? And, and and just just before that, like like what, what, yeah, while you are thinking about your answer, <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah yeah, I want to give you an information about I don't know if I pronounce it right. Is it machinarium or machinarium? I don't know. Uh, yeah yeah. Uh, machinarium. Yeah, I think okay. 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 Uh, this, it's like uh, I tell it machinarium. Yeah. It's okay. It's, <laughs> uh, yeah. I just. Uh, um, yeah, uh, like we, we hosted that game in the uh, Amber uh, Art and Technology Festival in 2010. So so it's so so that that was a very in, uh, interesting festival, and it's yeah it's a kind of a, let's say a contemporary arts event, and at that time mm -hmm. 2010, uh, Machinarium. Uh, was uh, was one of the uh, pieces which is exhibited uh, in the uh, in the in the exhibition in the, in the let's say the festival, and also um, sorry I I just forgot his name and also the uh, the let's say the founder of Amenita was uh, there. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah cool. uh, so so in a way it's very interesting. I mean because. In a way, they it was one of the first examples of what we called an, an art game uh, in maybe because of its like very mm -hmm. artistic style. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now you can <laughs> uh, answer my long and deep yeah, question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, like uh, actually, like all like all of us um, that they are like lead designers and Amrita design that we have this like artistic background and we studied art schools 
and uh, also go through the Czech animation history and uh, things like this. So uh, even even though like I was thinking that my uh, that Greeks is different in a style, they kind of they kind of completely fit. I think in the in the American portfolio. So uh, yeah. So I, I think like actually. Each of the game is kind of like uh, the the lead designer is kind of artist or has uh, or has this artistic school and the team is built around him to create his game and his vision. So that's why it can be seen also on some exhibitions, I think. Uh, and how it developed from uh, from Machinarium, uh, yeah, I think the the, the other games like Samorost Free. But uh, they are developments in, in graphics and uh, in uh, in uh, in audio, and uh, it's much more complicated. For example, the the audio direction and stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, the truth is that they are also like potential adventures, and it's not not very much different from the uh, from the Machinarium. Uh, I think I think I have to say uh, now the Pilgrims. It's uh, it's a uh, it's actually like the previous game from Monitor Design. Uh, like Jakub wanted to kind of experiment with the with the game game style also. So it's actually point and click adventure, but it's, it's driven with the cards, and uh, you have uh, you don't have like one solution for the puzzle. There is a lot of solutions, and you can get a lot of achievements. So it's quite a short game, but if you are playing it again and again, you find different combinations and different animations and stuff like this. So this is a different approach also in the in the uh, gameplay, uh, I think Huchel, it's uh, kind of like a simplified point and click adventure, but uh, I think it's great. Like uh, it's really, really focused on the jokes and stuff like this. So, and also I think a little bit like younger guys enjoy it a lot. And for me, I, I as I tell, I was, uh, I always liked very much this. Uh, uh, like art style and visual start of Amanita design, but I'm not completely point and click adventure player. I didn't grow on these games, as you mentioned. Uh, I more played uh, Ape, uh, Ape's Odyssey or or Another World or 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 some Czech, Czech games like Fish Pellets, which is a logical game. And so, so for me, it was it was like a it was exciting to try to to bring this visual style of Amanita design also to the different genre, a little bit uh, try something different and and show it. Uh, and yeah, as exactly. I could. But it's, it was very interesting because when we published the game uh, in the beginning, like these uh, hardcore fans, some of them they didn't kind of get it. Like they were really expecting another another Machinarium or another mm -hmm. Samorost, and the gameplay is really different. So. So for a couple of so in the beginning it was like oh it's not it's something different and it's repetitive and all the same and so we didn't like it but but uh, after this uh, this wave it's actually the it's getting better and better scores <laughs> and uh, yeah and like uh, generally I think people like it and for for some people it's even more interesting that uh, maybe like me they are not so putting click players so they, they they can enjoy this art style in, in a different in a different genre yeah it's an important part like i mean to be able to move from one uh, one well known game to with the new game you know uh, sometimes people many companies are stuck with their already well defined games from their past but you know yeah. they should be able to create something new you know yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, continue, please. Uh, it is good, and also because it's it's actually a game of one of our teams. So I think as long as there are more teams working on their separate games, there will be there will be the, there will be different games uh, uh, like appearing, and so we, we are not able to stuck with one. I think, or yeah. we will not stuck with one. That's <laughs> great. Yeah, amazing. So, yeah, from our audience, we have. Plenty of people, so don't be shy. Ask questions. Fire. Through Discord, through Twitch, chat panel, or you have your voices to speak up. I wrote a couple of questions to the Q&A uh, chat, but 
Okay. I can also ask. Okay, it will um, be amazing, please. Well, um, it, first of all, I'm so amazed to meet uh, such a crea uh, creator like you, sir. Um, and on the other hand, <laughs> when I take a look at your stuff and your designs, I um, mostly see like Edward Gorey stuff or maybe um, a little bit of Enki Bilal. Do, do you also inspired mm -hmm. from them? Do you like them? I just wanted to know. Yes, yeah, I, I think I, and keep it, I have it in this here somewhere. I have it there, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, my girlfriend was a big fan of uh, of, of Gori, <laughs> so I, I know this stuff and uh, I like it. And some people saw Tim Barton in, in it, and it's all, I, I it's all, it's 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 I all I like all these things. I was not like uh, I would like to do it directly in this style. But, uh, okay, I will. I will make a. I will make a Edward Gorey game, like Edward Rocky style game. Uh, I just wanted to came out from my free drawings, but uh, because I like all these things, I think it somehow like um, appear in the final in the final style. Like they somehow blend into it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, just one more question I have. Um, did, did you have any moments that you felt like you're giving up on the project? Because it seems like you spend a lot of time on it and effort also. Um, and if you did so, uh, how did you get over it? Uh, I, 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 I didn't. <laughs> I, 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 th I think some, maybe some of the members of the team had this feeling. But uh, actually, also I needed to be the one that somehow sometimes tried to pull everybody together if they would be losing the faith. So I, I couldn't afford it very much. Also, but uh, on the other hand, I didn't. I didn't think it will take such a long time to finish it. I was I was always thinking like, ah, oh, okay, so it will be this half of a year and we are done. Like it, it, it. All the time it looks like that we are almost there, and and it was I don't know three more years or something like this. So. Uh, yeah, I, I was living with this thing that mm. ah, we are we are kind of finishing. Maybe if I would knew that it will be okay from now on, it will be for more years like this. So I would have kind of maybe problems. And and now I'm actually thinking to really make something shorter, smaller, uh, because it was it was really long time. And and I I wasn't I didn't know how people would like it. So I was like, if you're working if you're working on something so long, then I was really like hoping that people would like it, and if they liked it, it was like a relief for me. That's not like oh you who, but it was more like oh who, because I mean it's fine. <laughs> uh, do you also yeah? Do you also work on the, on the other projects while while doing this project, like in like in parallel, like in in the other projects of Amenita, or you just work on this project like all that time? Yeah, I, I worked on that project all the time. Now, as I finish it, uh, I, I think I will uh, I will help a little bit with some other projects in development right now, uh, and and at the same time, like thinking maybe ideas for my next game. So, but during the development, I was really concentrating on this one project, and I was as I was like a designer, also also uh, like an artist for it. I was like sitting on many chairs. So I had, I had still a lot of stuff to do, so wow. it was enough. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. I just like to read one question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Osman asked about it. Uh, he's asking that that why did you choose to paint them? Is it uh, to understand the texture? Like he means the oil paintings, and he says uh, that it, he says that if you had to do it again, would you do it the digital drawing instead of uh, like hand painting? Uh, but but he I, says that he also got his answers. I guess I guess during your presentation, you already uh, okay. Yeah, but if you want to say anything more and give any detail, yes. Uh, maybe how we how we choose it in the beginning, I can add. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was basically because uh, also before I was doing some animation movies and some illustrations, and uh, I just liked the 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 the. Ink, ink drawing, and my friend that was like 
like we, we, we lived together also in the dormitory and in the flat then during the studies. Uh, Honza Chlup, he is a painter in the beginning and and uh, so it was actually actually for us exciting to to bring the techniques that we liked the most to the game. So yeah, <laughs> like he was always thinking like how to make his paintings, uh, how to digitalize them and he was doing some 3D uh, spaces like that you are inside the painting and something like this. So uh, it was also for him uh, exciting uh, idea to make the, the oil paintings or um, acrylic paintings to be in the game. I, I, I don't think there is another game that is mm. using the old painting, uh, oil painting. I, I guess pen drawing there, there there can be some, but oil painting I don't think so. It was <laughs> like he do he do one layer also. And then he had to wait uh, quite a long time be, be, uh, until the oil dry, so he can do another layer. So yeah, we have eight years quite easily from it. <laughs> and yeah, and uh, as I tell in the beginning, it was it was also like our first project. So I guess we can we would be able to make it uh, faster if we would do another game or or like the last. Mm, like then we became much faster in the in the in the in the last few years, but it's like this. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Uh, you can speak up or you can write in the live Q and A part. And maybe uh, and is there any questions? Is there any questions from the Twitch channel? We can also. Uh, you can also check the channel. Okay, one question just popped up in the Twitch chat. Okay. Okay, I'm just directly reading it. Um, uh, how do you analyze your target group? Uh, because you try different styles each time and spend a lot of effort and money for this. It must be a huge risk. Uh, to analyze how, uh, yeah. If it will, if it will pay back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like you mean to, to, to analyze the risks? If, if it, it, it's uh, it's actually it was all uh, like it, it's thanks to the Jakub Jakub Dvorsky, the founder of Amarita, that he just like trusted us, and this is I think it's kind of amazing that he he could he keep this trust for such a long time. And that's what I was afraid during the development that uh, maybe, maybe uh, like he will stop the project that somehow because we were going quite slow, so he will stop it and uh, we will not finish it. Um, but like once, once we published the trailer for the game, it was already obvious that we are, we are, we are finishing it, and it was also quite a relief for me that I knew we will, we will for sure like bring this to the end. So it was nice. And yeah, I think it just, it was a risk, yeah. And, and like he just took it and, and it actually already paid back. So we are fine now. I'm, I'm happy that, that my idea didn't make somebody to bankrupt or something like this. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and I guess you have a, uh, you have a kind of a, a, a niche target audience. So in a way it's, they are like, uh, it, it, yeah, for example, me. It's uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Even I, even I don't. Uh, I mean, even I don't. Uh, yeah, haven't watched a trailer of of, of a game of a, of a game from Amenita. I will buy it. So it's kind of like also a kind of a collector approach. I guess your your audience is also kind of, is also like a collector, like an art collector. Yeah, they want to really. I mean, yeah. besides playing them, they want to also have them in their library uh, to. To, to, to check them from t from from time to time, so uh, so that I way, guess. Mm -hmm. I guess you have a very a niche target audience, like which which yeah which follows you till the end. So that's my <laughs> idea. Yeah, I, I hope I hope like with this we can also now make it the niche a little bit wider, and um, it, it and I know that it has a very strong fan base. I'm on it up. But sometimes uh, I saw some I saw some let's play of, of Greeks and it was nice that maybe it was their first game from Amanita and they played it and like it and they were like ah okay so what else 
what else uh, do these company do these guys made so i'm also like happy that maybe greeks can bring a new people to the to this to this fun base so that, that's cool and and maybe maybe another thing is uh, actually uh, like i guess you first game on Apple Arcade, Apple Arcade was Pilgrims, as far as I yes. know. And mm -hmm. I, I guess that was also a breaking point for you, right? Because uh, to have a slot in Apple Arcade, uh, I guess it was also something new and which I think it's uh, it really uh, yeah. helped, helped your brand to, to be seen in other maybe markets and because because Apple uh, let's say consumer is also a kind of a premium uh, let's say yeah, consumer yeah. and in a way it fits with that uh, niche approach of yours uh, maybe yeah it it like it helped us a lot like uh, this appearance on Apple Arcade it was fine um, um, what what else can I say. <laughs> And then, uh, and also may, may, maybe for the last time, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Creeks is the first game on uh, PS4, or, or like? Uh, yeah, 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 it's actually. I think also Machinarium is also there. Ah, Machinarium. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's interesting because Machinarium it's already like 10 years old game, but during these years it's uh, it, it appeared on all these platforms on. Mobiles on on Switch on PS4 uh, on Xbox, so yeah, the development took I think like three and a half years of it, so much less than weeks. But uh, actually, they made like all the all the platforms at the same time. I think I think with Machinarium they have to completely reprogram it, like if they were going for another because it was in the in the flash. Uh, the first version was in the flash, so. If they were going for new platform, they, could, they had to completely reprogram it. So this was this was nice with Greeks that as we were working uh, with Unity, it was much easier to, to to port it. Yeah, so it's 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 the second. It's actually it's the second game for PlayStation Four, and it's cool. We we, we uh, like we had some we got some promotion because uh, some some time ago they were promoting some indie games that they are developing developing for the PlayStation 4, so uh, some more people get a chance to look into our niche. It was nice. Thank okay, you. I can continue with more questions from our chat panel. Um, okay, in your presentation, uh, you showed an animation in Unity 2017. Uh, since you worked on your project for a long time, technology has evolved during that time. Was there a moment where Unity updates messed up things or on the contrary, a new tool update came and made a difficult task much easier? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, yes, we were like, uh, we were doing, working on it for a longer time and we were updating the Unity actually quite frequently. And, uh, and when they were bigger updates, it's always a little bit messed things up. And I don't know, it took, it took the programmer or it took us maybe like a week to, to adjust it to the new version. Like, you know, not like one week of the, uh, of the like full time, full time work, but they were like appearing some, some troubles and that we were like uh, fixing them on the run. And, uh, but, but the, the biggest change uh, for the good was with the animations, because as I tell in the presentation, we were doing the animations in the Unity fr from the beginning completely. And in the beginning, it was really crazy, like the animation tools in the Unity were, were uh, really bad and really slow. And during the, during the time, it, uh, it became much better. So in the end, it was actually quite okay. Also, uh, we made some special special tools that uh, help us to clear the memory and clear some keyframes, and so it was uh, it was a little bit uh, it was a little bit better for our animator. But still, like uh, he had to be very patient patience with with the with the unit, with animating the unit. But it was it was a good thing, and I think generally it was like uh, it was getting better and better, and these uh, these step backs wasn't so bad with the updates. Okay. okay, thank you. And 
One other question, and it's a really general question, I guess. Many of our students would like to hear some answer to this question, I guess. Uh, what uh, what are you give advices for beginner in the game development sector? So what are your advices for the beginners in general, I guess? Uh -huh. uh, I don't know, like for me, uh, when I was when I was starting, uh, I, I can, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure if I have like a general, general advice, but I can a little bit tell how I get into it. And uh, I always like games and also I like board games and uh, at actually it's, it's here <laughs> like the, 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 the in the bottom it's a, it's a board game I designed uh, it's uh, so so at the, at, the, at the university before I start to do the diploma I also designed like one board game that was published and it was a nice thing to also show to, to Jakub Dvorsky in Amarita that I am able to to finish some game or some project to, uh, to until the end. So, like if you if you don't have programmer and uh, and a team, I think uh, to try to make some board game is it's a nice uh, it's a nice thing uh, to do. Uh, yeah, I, like this is my advice. Like if you like some board games, try to start with them, and maybe maybe some game jams. But actually, I I, I never was on one, so I cannot recommend it completely. <laughs> Okay. And, and hang up and hang up with people that they make that they are making games and it will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for your answers. Okay. On Twitch side, these were the those were Dan's uh, questions. And do you have any other questions, people? Yeah, I yeah, I can also add something, you know, do, yeah, yeah, during your presentation I uh I, uh, you know, uh, found out that you're, you're also a collector of like many different things, like, like inspirations from games, styles, architecture. So I think uh, maybe uh, that could also be an advice for the students or, or the people who want to dive in. Because it's not just about like tools, it's also a culture. Uh, so, so you have to really uh, collect things and also mix them, right? Because, because, cause, yeah, because ideas are not coming from like from air. In a way, yeah. in a way, you you, you collect them uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, stories, in terms of art styles, in terms of like maybe trials and errors. So, I think that I mean, it, I I just found out from your journey that. Uh, you collected and tried a, a lot of materials, and uh, and and, and uh, mm -hmm. also you were brave enough to. Uh, I think which is the most important one, because because uh, sometimes like our students are like they 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 are afra afraid of failing, even they are even they are at school. So, but I think even as a professional project, yeah, you, uh, you can't. Yeah, you like pursued your dream until the end. It is the, I was also like doubting, but this I just really like said that I would like to finish it and and I just did it. <laughs> this maybe I, I have a head for it that if I just set some goal, I will just go to uh, I will just go to the finish line with this. So yeah, <laughs> this was good. <clears throat> and cool. like my, as, as you tell, like uh, it's nice to look around things, but uh, like um, like my one of my biggest tools is really like a sketchbook that uh, if I have time I'm really just like a sketching a lot of stuff and like also let my subconscious to to tell what it wants to tell and so it's also nice to um, it's it's a it's a great tool so even if then I was like drawing it digitally on my on my uh, on my tablet then uh, I, ha I have a lot of uh, sketches on paper because it's really like a fastest fastest way way from the head to the to the paper or yeah, to be to be uh, able to see it some idea cool. um, yeah okay people it's almost like 9:45 maybe last uh, two three minutes uh, so if you are if you have any questions about Creeks, uh, about uh, Redim Judas, uh, 
Uh, sorry, it's, it's Yurda, right? It's Yurda. Yurda, right, great. Ah, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about it. Uh, Redim Yurda's uh, like uh, approach, his style, or his process in Kriegs, uh, just shoot it while, uh, while he's here. <laughs> Okay, let me check the uh, Q&A. Uh, okay. Okay, maybe, maybe. Okay, uh, there is a question uh, about internships and submitting projects on the Amentas site. Uh, Okay, uh, she says that there's a negative post. This is very scary for a curious person. What's going on behind the scenes? Well, uh, is this kind of like a comment? Uh, uh, like, like. Is there, uh, is there a question mark? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a question mark at the end, but you know, I couldn't understand the question. Uh, could you please help us? I, I don't know the name, H. H E L M Z. Uh, should I check it? Well, I think. Huh. I think it's about the uh, version of Unity updates. Uh, when you're working on a project, you know, uh, if you're working on a version and it changes in the other version and it affects the things that you have done before, and I think. Um, um this friend of ours tries to ask was there a moment where unity updates messed up things or on the contrary a new tool update came and made a difficult task much easier yes we already asked that question and it's already been I'm answered <laughs> this question has been answered very well <laughs> okay <laughs> i guess uh she or he is asking about internships. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah maybe let me try to make it uh, make out of make a question out of it. So, so do you do you have interns uh, with you working at Amenita, and do you accept international uh, students? Uh, uh, not at the, not at the moment, and mm -hmm. I just. Uh, it's actually it's a question for for Kuba for the for the um, like a leader of the company, so I cannot answer it very much. But I know that somebody was asking this to him, and he was like uh, telling that he likes the idea, but uh, it's actually at the moment it's not something that he uh, he is looking for. That, uh, yeah, I guess it. We are we are we are actually really small teams, like with with these five people, and I don't know, uh, like we we didn't do it yet. Like he tell, he's kind of open to it, but uh, it didn't happen so far. So yeah, we will see in the future. Yeah, probably it depends on the project, on the scale of the project, maybe. Um, so I think if the opportunity would uh, would somehow appear, that maybe we will let people know. <laughs> but I think it's not happening at the moment. But, yeah, but uh, he's but he's always like as uh, as he was willing with me to go for the beer to chat for, for the idea. It's like open to this, I think. Uh, yeah, but, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, but uh, what I can say is if you are uh, like wondering about the internships, uh, let's say internship possibilities, uh, yeah, we are in touch with, um, uh, yeah, as Buglet, we are in touch with uh, the, the Czech uh, Gaming, uh, yeah, Czech Gaming Association, which, uh, which uh, Aminita is also a part of. So, uh, so, so, uh, yeah. So, at some point, we could, uh, we could maybe, we, yeah, we could make a request, and, and if if they need, uh, then yeah, why not? Yeah, 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 yeah sure, if... sure, sure. You can try too. <laughs> <laughs> at least we can try. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. The worst would be that uh, they would say no or something. So, not the deal. Okay, I guess Damna was writing a question. But she gave up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think we have no questions, right, right Arturo? Uh, I guess any question? We are, done. we are done. We are done. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Then, thank you, Radim, for your time, and and please, please thank stay you very happy. much.
please say hi to all the all the team members, Amenita, because uh, yeah, 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 last year we were there. Uh, maybe I, uh -huh. I guess I guess you weren't there, but uh -huh. last year we, we we had the chance to visit uh, Amenita. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Look. Oh, cool. Yeah. Last year, cool. Lucas, uh, yeah, Lucas right, so. was there, and like he he kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. took care of us. Uh -huh. So it, it was great to meet you all. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I uh, hope to hope uh, we uh, hope to host you again with your new game. <laughs> uh, ah, cool. Yeah. Let's yeah. see each other in, in in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hopefully, uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's like this. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much for for having me and for the Thank attention. You. And and, and one last. One last announcement: We will also uh, we will also brought, uh, we will also publish this uh, let's say talk on the YouTube channel. So if you have missed uh, some part of his presentation, uh, you will be able to you will be able to check it out later on the on the YouTube channel of Bug Lab. Uh, Ahmed is just trying uh, typing. Sorry, typing something. Maybe last some last words, <laughs> Vadim. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ahmed says thank you for your presentation, sir. And yes, uh, thank you again. Thank and, you very much. Yeah. And please uh, okay. take care. Take, uh, take, yeah. Take care. Yeah. Too. Take care and stay safe. <laughs> thank you. Cool. You too, everybody. Bye bye. Uh, Play some bye -bye. nice games. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.